Hello everyone. Welcome to Visionary Voices, the podcast series at To The New. I am Angana, your host, and with me today is the true stalwart of the tech industry. Joining us is a very special guest, someone who brings with him over 25 years of experience in technology and business leadership across multiple domains like finance, telecom, media, and most intriguingly, what are the odds? Wagering. It is our mission today to explore the latest technological innovations in the wagering world. So let's dive right in. Hi Matt, welcome to the podcast. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Sure. So for starters, we'd like to begin this podcast by delving into this broad landscape of where technology intersects with wagering. It is a given that technology continues to revolutionize multiple facets of an organization, be it improving operational efficiency to boosting productivity to you know something like enhancing the user experience and so on but also given the dynamic and data driven nature of the wagering industry which facet do you believe calls for the maximum attention for technological leverage as in where do you think technology can truly hit the nail on the head yeah i think it needs to be customer first and customer driven um so in the wagering context we think about what are the products that our customers want to interact with um what is the optimal user experience for them to have as seamless experience as possible in interacting with those products um but then i guess also taking a step forward further towards personalized experiences within that so you know how does technology enable and intersect with that i think if i think about the products um you know we have our back end um betting hosts so that's um basically the equivalent to a, a bank's back office finance systems right it's where all of the calculations happen it's where all of the product information is held and you know we're looking uh, at the moment around what is the next generation of betting hosts in in our business to enable more products more configurable products greater volume of products um so we're partnering with a company called openbet who uh working with us on replacing our fixed odds platform um so we'll be going live with a um a beta of that in just a few months and then a progressive roll out over probably the next 12 months um it's a pretty significant piece of work um like i said akin to a finance backend um and we're also our other i suppose product line within that is uh, around tote betting um and we're now working on our strategy for for tote betting so i think once we've got those you know newer components in place we'll be able to have um more products greater configurability around those products and then once you've got that it's i guess how do we also then amplify that up in server experience layer so we've um, been on a journey you know for probably about 2 years now uh, and we're still on the journey of transformation uh, a big part of that has been our customer experience and how we've used google flutter um in order to completely you know reimagine our um app uh gaming experience so we use flutter across both iOS and Android um and we're just about to start um replatforming our desktop website um with Flutter as well so a great way to get kind of reusability um across different um channels um from a, a largely common code base um and then you know the power of that great user experience we've developed underpinned by you know highly configurable you know products you know through openbet and and a future tote platform i think that's a, a big part of it for us and as a bit of a data geek uh, i can't not say that data underpins all of that as well in order to provide personalized experience you need to deeply know your customer um and we uh, you know working heavily on our data acceleration program where we're using databricks's lake house um to help power the whole customer experience right that's very interesting just to build on to the user experience that you were mentioning about now when it comes to improving user experience data personalization plays a crucial role and for me one of the most interesting things about data personalization is that today it's everywhere yeah. right from e-commerce to digital streaming services and it's so much so that it's setting the standard and it's quickly becoming the norm yeah. so with such kind of a shift towards tailored user experiences how is technology in the wagering industry adapting to meet such personalized data expectations. Yeah, you, I agree with everything you said. I think it is rapidly becoming the expected behavior, not necessarily a standout behavior. 
Um, I think standout behaviors are going to come through things like, um, you know, generative AI and how we can use that in the future. But I suppose to, an to answer your question, I think in order to in order to deliver great personalized experiences, it needs to be data driven, as I, as I just mentioned. And in order to be able to maximize the value from your data, so being able to get access to it quickly, being able to, you know, apply it quickly. There's two, two kind of pieces to that puzzle in my mind. I mean, one is consolidation of data. I think a lot of organizations, regardless of um, industry or, or, or organization, often have data silos across their organizations, right? They've got a separate data lake, they've got a separate data warehouse, they've got some operational data stores. It's just, it's just the nature of, um, uh, of business. But, you know, we, we take a very, I suppose, clear view that to maximize the power of it, we need to consolidate. And not just consolidate, but also unify the data. So we, uh, again, I just mentioned, we're going on a, a journey with Databricks. So using their lake house architecture um, to be able to consolidate about six or seven different platforms onto the lake house, and then being able to, I suppose, leverage that in order to you know, power these experiences. Um, I think the other facet to it beyond consolidation is taking an ecosystem approach to how you personalize. So, you know, you need to source the right data, consolidate and unify, and then what's, how, what's your engagement channel? How are you gonna bring that to life? You know, we, we um, are heavy users of the Adobe suite of, of products. And, you know, we kind of take the data, make it, you know, in a way that's usable for Adobe. And then Adobe helps us push it out to our channels. So whether it be our app, our websites, um, you know, in the future retail experiences, um, so I think they're the two things. I think consolidation of data, unification, but then an ecosystem view around how you deliver it to channel. But there's no point in having data if you can't get that personalized insight all the way through to channel at speed. Right, I get it. Let's flip the cards now. For a brief moment, what if I play the devil's advocate with your permission? Yeah. So this push for personalization often comes at the cost of invading user privacy. While on, the, yep, yep. While on one hand, we do use technology to cater to individual data preferences, but then on the other hand, we cannot compromise on safeguarding data. Yep. Considering this delicate balance that needs to be maintained between personalization and privacy, uh, how does one ensure responsible data practices? It, it's such an important question and, and it's such an important topic. And I think at, at Tabcor, we have always taken our data governance and, uh, you know, privacy uh, obligations incredibly seriously, you know, and it's, it's beyond the technology, right? So our data governance processes, policies, guidelines, our, you know, and similarly, our privacy policies, guidelines, and what have you um, are in place, are regularly reviewed. You know, we have a, a whole um, structure around data governance committees and responsible use of data and you know privacy compliance so i think first things first you have to have that robustness around your processes having that is super important but then i suppose to ensure that it's applied in a really consistent way and you know there's uh, you know you don't have any um accidents and you know accidentally using data the wrong way we're, we're taking the approach to then systemize it right so leveraging um, our, you know, one of the examples would be Databricks's Unity Catalog. So that's how we kind of get all of our data governance policies and, and what have you, you know, embedded within a system so as that we make sure that we've got the right uh, level of control that it can be accessed only where it should be and where it's appropriate for it to be used. Um, we also, you know, solicit, you know, direct feedback from our customers around what is their preferences um, around uh, and permissions. Uh, around their use of their data. So, you know, a customer can declare that they do or don't want us to use their data. A customer can declare the, you know, how they want us to use their data and you need to capture that and respect that. Um, so I think that that's how we take it. I think you can't, there's no substitute for great processes, policies and culture, but then adding it to your system so as that the safeguards are systemized, I think is really important. Right, uh, trust me, uh, listening to that makes me feel like it's very reassuring and encouraging to know that there are so many such measures already in place which are helping in maintaining that balance. 
and if a giant like yours can do it i think then that sets an inspiration for everyone to ensure that this part is taken care of and it's hard work it doesn't you know it doesn't happen easily and it doesn't happen without great sponsorship from the executive team and then you know accountability lies with everyone at tabcorp you know we are all you know responsible for data governance so i think that's the culture that you need to sort of drive but it's not easy but it's so important that the effort is absolutely worth it right on similar lines uh just going back to what i was talking about responsibility yeah. how can something as advanced as gen ai be used to promote responsible gambling which we all know is like at the heart of any wagering company yeah yeah absolutely and you know we've kind of recently um uh relaunched our approach to responsible gambling and we're calling it safer gambling you know because i think what we want to do is create a safe environment for our customers you know where um you know we 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 take their interests and what not at heart um how can you use gen ai we are using gen ai so i think tabcor were you know one of the early pioneers in um using uh ai and generative ai in order to you know proactively uh identify potential customer harm um so you know ideally before something happens so is it that we can then have proactive interventions and you know which are come in a myriad of different you know forms and fashions um and that gives us deep insights uh around player behavior player habits um and gives us great indicators early on and proactively when something you know could be going in a direction that is um you know a potential risk for a customer um because we want our customers to enjoy our products um but enjoy them safely absolutely it sounds like we aren't very far from reaching that near utopian stage where we're using the best of technology to be working in tandem and in favor of the greatest good of the society that should be all about goal right because i think you know if we take that approach and we are community minded and we are very aware of you know the the needs of our customers and you know respect their privacy or you know try to um uh help them through you know the proactive interventions as i mentioned you know it's only going to drive you know greater trust from our customers in us as an organization it's only going to you know sort of show to the industry and show to the community more broadly that we care and we take these things really really responsibly and i think if you do all of that really well then your business receives the benefits from that right because people will want to deal with us you know so you know whether it be market share whether it be revenue profit and what have you i think that they you know organically get benefit from being you know a cust- uh, being a company that cares for its customers and the community on that positive note as we come to the end of today's podcast we'd love to hear your thoughts on how your technology partners like to the new help you in staying ahead in this competitive world any parting nuggets of wisdom for us Yeah, absolutely. Like at Tabcorp, we've been going on a transformation now for a couple of years. Um it's a journey that we're still on, you know. I I think we've still got a lot to accomplish that we want to accomplish. In saying that, we've accomplished a heck of a lot in 2 years as well, but we've been able to do that through great partnerships. Um you know, you can't have an endless supply of internal technologists within an organization. You need partnerships to be able to have uh scale to be able to gain access to different perspective different um uh diverse opinions and points of view different skill sets and what have you so we really embrace partnering um in order to be able to gain access um to to all of those areas and you know to the new have been a partner with Tabcorp for longer than I've been there um so I think uh, I think we're coming on 6 years now uh, of the Tabcorp TCN partnership um and you know I was quite lucky Two years ago, and I joined to already have TTN folks embedded within the team that I took over, and you know that relationship has grown and flourished across data, across digital engineering, across software engineering, um, and I think you know it's a beautiful thing. And you know I use the word partnership quite deliberately um, because I think that we've moved far beyond a, a transactional customer vendor relationship. We do things for each other. to be cause of the good of the partnership um and you know ultimately that drives greater value for Tabcorp it drives you know greater outcomes for our customers so uh yeah looking forward to another 6 years and more absolutely thank you for your kind words it was great talking to you and you thank you for having me thank you